Hello, this is Davey, and this is my wife, Carrie. Hi. Um, we wanted to share this song. We were talking about um, putting this video together, and Davey was thinking about this song that I've been playing for years and years. Um, it's a song called Clear the Stage by Jimmy Needham. Um, and it just kind of talks about um, how... After we're saved, we kind of need to continually be drawing closer to God and being um, in a practical and a spiritual sense, removing distractions so that we can be closer and closer to Jesus.
Thank you. Uh, I think it's kind of hard to hear that song and not feel some sort of conviction. Um, the song talks about taking uh, big measures um, and getting right with God. Um, uh, I just want to start with uh, reading uh, Mark 12. In verse 30 it says, And thou shalt love the Lord with thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Uh, it's kind of hard to obey that verse and still have idols in your life. And I think uh, most of us have idols in our life. And I think the big part is identifying them. Um, one of the verses in that song, one of the parts talks about um, getting rid of the pews um, in, a, in a church. And uh, obviously there's nothing wrong with pews, but um, I think it's more talking about the comfort. If you feel, you know, having the idol of comfort in your life. And that's a big one for me too. Um, just picture picture somebody like finally realizing that the pews in the church or the, the people getting comfortable in a church is an idol and they're elevating that above God. They're elevating their their desire to look for comfort and their their uh, desire to have comfort in their lives and safety to be to a, a place where they don't want to do what God wants them to do because that is more important than God. Um, sometimes, uh, we get so comfortable with with uh, our our church life that we we don't want to you know going to church that we don't want to be we don't want to get to the place where this is this is this is elevated above God. But now that we're not in church, like a lot of us aren't going to church every week, um, we we are having church at home. And uh, what what are some things that's in our life? right now at home when we're doing our Sunday morning church um, that's that's taking precedence over over the Lord um, there's a there's another verse in that song that talks about setting sound and setting the sound system and the lights on fire and that that just seems kind of extreme you know I, I can picture somebody realizing that that the show that the church is putting on the show that we are putting on as a Christian, is is uh, more important to us than 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 honoring God with with what we have. And I can picture them. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a sound system. There's nothing wrong with having lights in your church. Just like there's nothing wrong with the pews. But if you elevate that stuff above, if you make it something about you, and if you make it something about what you're trying to be perceived as, and and your focus is off of God and it's on you, then it is an idol. Um, and uh. The, the I'm, I'm, I want to talk about this, the the uh, steps of actually doing something big for God. It's specifically the the thing of getting rid of idols, because um, no matter what anyone says, getting rid of the idols in your life is is uh, like like Jesus said in in, in verse thirty. He says uh, this is the first commandment, and I think it's I think it's uh, one. It's the most, if not one of the most important verses, because. If you can get rid of the idols, then everything else falls more in line with what with what you need to be doing, and in, in, as, as what we need to be doing as a church, and what we need to be doing personally in our own lives. Um, um, so, uh, so a lot of times we like to justify our idols. Um, so we we look at uh, some things that aren't necessarily wrong or bad, like uh, our career or our hobbies, or just like I said, our comfortable life, we justify these things by saying, well, these aren't bad. Why can't I be involved with my career? Well, you, you can be involved with your career. You can have a hobby. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, but whenever we, but, but where they become an idol is whenever we move them from just a hobby or where we make a living or something like that, and we move it to something that we give all of our time to. We move it to something that we give all of our... Uh, love to um and that that's the hobbies you know if we if we just focus on when's the next time we can and do this thing like you know whether it's like i like to fish you know I, there's a lot of things i like to do but if you focus on if, if it fills your mind and your heart then it's it's elevated to a place that it should not be um if you can't stop thinking of something like the song says then then it's an idol um, so it's not about the, the things like lights or sound system or your hobby or a career 
or financial security. All these things are good to have and they're, and they're good, but it's, it's our responsibility not to elevate them above, above God and above worshiping above our worship for God. You know, it, like we, whether we like to think of it or not, if we, if we devote our time and our thought process too much to, to anything, our career, our anything, our hobby, anything like that, then uh, we are worshiping that thing and we ought not to be doing that. Um, uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah 2, I'm going to find that if I can. Jeremiah 2, 11 says, uh, Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which, do, which does not profit. Um, I'm saying this because I've, I've been there too. Um, I'm definitely, you know, I, I, I can't say for you what you are elevating above God. But I know for me, there's a lot of things that I, I like and I get into that aren't bad. And then I'm the one responsible for taking that thing and manipulating it in a way that is now above God. And now it's an idol. And this thing, whatever it may be, needs to be uh, taken care of. It needs to be ripped out. It needs to be set on fire. The, the drastic measures taken. And uh, there's a there's a scene in that movie, uh, Fireproof, that I like, that I always think about. And it's kind of a ridiculous scene. It's kind of funny, but there's a lot of, there's, some, there's truth to it. Um, the main character, the husband, is, uh, he, he's letting his computer, his physical computer, his desktop computer, get in between his relationship with his wife and and also his god and he knows it but he doesn't do anything about it for a while and then he just gets fed up with it and instead of turning his computer off instead of selling it he takes it outside he throws it outside and he beats it in pieces with a baseball bat and i and i like i like that uh just that illustration of if there's an idol in your life to get rid of it by any means necessary um now I can't, like I said, I can't identify what your idols are. I know what mine are, and I know what needs to go for me, but I can't identify what yours are. And, um, I, but I do want to say, you know what they are. And if God has shed some light or if God has revealed to you what, what you need to take care of, I just want to, I just want to encourage you to do whatever it takes to take any means necessary to get rid of it. Um, our nation is obviously at a place now that's kind of weird and, and churches aren't meeting and that so many things are, are weird. But I, I truly believe that God can use this time to bring a nationwide revival to, to America. I, I think he can, but it's not going to be something that we individually sit back and watch. It's not going to be like we're watching a movie. We have to play a part of this. It's going to take each Christian to identify their idols and get rid of it personally because revival is not going to just magically happen over over or the country with the Christians just standing by and watching you have to you have to rip up the idols you have to set them on fire you have to beat them with a baseball bat if you have to you have to take any means necessary to do it and I and I know it sounds funny but that's just the point I'm trying to make is your the idols that are above God your idols that are that you are elevating above God is is not funny to God and although it may seem funny to take any means necessary honor God by doing whatever it takes whatever it takes to get rid of those rid of those idols if you have to quit a job if you have to beat your computer to pieces no matter what you have to do honor God by getting rid of those idols in any way necessary um and and it it won't it's not easy um, nobody this side of heaven is going to know how hard it was for you to, to get rid of the thing that you are elevating. Um, like for example, there's, there's part times in my life where I spent way too much time fishing whenever I should have been uh, doing other things. Um, and, and I would go to the river and go fishing all the time. And the, the, the thing is, for some people, they would look at that and be like, oh, well, that's not an idol. Or they would look at that and say, well, why don't you just quit? You know, but but for, for me individually, that that is hard to do. And for some people, if their idol, whether it's alcohol or their idol is their career or their idol is just the desire to be 
accept it, whatever their idol might be, it it's not going to be, it might be easy for other people to get rid of that specific idol, but it's not going to be easy for you. But you don't have to do it by yourself. Um, the Bible says in Isaiah 41.10, a very good verse, um, it says, uh, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Um, it, it, it's a matter of submitting to God. Um, it, you, you, your heart needs to be right with God first, and he will give you the strength to, to get rid of this, this whatever it might be, to get rid of the, the idol that you know, that you are thinking of, that you know is in your life. Um, I've got them, you've got them, and I, I truly believe that's what's one of the biggest reasons why um, revival doesn't come is because there's one idol that we refuse to get rid of. There's one idol that's just, that's, you know, I'm, it's so easy to get rid of some. It's so easy to say, we're not going to do this. Like I can look at Carrie and say, this is one thing our family's not going to do. And it's easy because I don't have any attachment to that. But there's some things that are an idol to me. And these are the things that will honor God more by me getting rid of than my, by me saying, oh, I'm not going to do this thing that I have no desire to do either way. Um, the Bible also says in Exodus 15 too, uh, that the Lord is my strength and song. Um, don't rely on yourself, your own strength to get to, to, uh, get to the place where you get rid of your idols. Don't, don't rely on your own great Christian walk. You're not as great as you think you are. I'm not as great as I think I am. Um, we have to rely on God every single day. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's just the, the, basically just what I wanted to say. Uh, it's not really what I planned on saying, but today, just a couple of the things that we were, a couple sermons that we were listening to and devotions and things, it just, it really, um, made me think that this is, this is what God wanted me to talk about. So, um, I hope that you get, uh, I hope you under, I hope I was clear in what I was trying to say. I hope I wasn't confusing. I hope that it, um, you know, we, we just all take steps to make the God honoring decision to get rid of the idols. Um, and I, I would like to pray before we close to talk about, or just to, just, just to ask God to help us individually. Um, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for a beautiful day that even though it, you know, things look different and things look, um, out of normal. Um, Lord, you just, we just pray that you use this time. You, Lord, we ask that you do whatever necessary to, uh, make clear to us what we need to get out of our lives so that you can be glorified. Lord, we just ask that you give us strength to do it. Lord, we ask that you give us the, uh, courage to stand up and say, to admit, yes, this is wrong to, to say, uh, this is what we need to get rid of. And, and then to do it and to not expect praise. God, we just want you to be glorified in all of this. God, I I, uh, I just ask that if there's someone out there that uh, that needs that needs help getting rid of their idol, that you would comfort them, that you would help them, that you would reveal to them, that you would send support their way, and and that you would you would just uh, show them that they're not alone. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.